Money is a funny thing. People often view it as worth the same no matter where you go. It's really not. Just like any other commodity, it's worth more or less depending on the region. Some items are cheaper in certain regions because they're made or produced nearby. I grew up in the Midwest where milk and beef are cheap and fresh ocean fish or tropical fruits are expensive. In Hawaii, the exact opposite is true, which is why they considered spam part of their cuisine. Demand also has a big impact on value. I recently moved from Indianapolis to the D.C. area, and I get paid 13000 more per year than I made at my last job, but adjusted for cost of living, I only make $2 more than I did because housing is double what it is in Indy. Always look up a cost of living calculator before you move to a different area. The reason I bring this up is because of a certain group called the Fight for 15, where they believe that minimum wage should be $15 per hour, which is roughly equal to what it would be in the 70s with inflation. I support them in their ideas and drive to unionize, as they are making great progress on a city-by-city -city basis. There is a problem with a $15 per hour minimum wage, however. Money isn't worth the same everywhere. $15 per hour in New York is roughly equivalent to $6.50 in Indianapolis, which is roughly the amount that minimum wage is already in the U.S. $15 an hour in Indiana was what I made as a scientist for many years. Money is messy, which is why the Fight for 15 is making such progress, because it's easy to understand, but it's also why it's getting so much backlash, as it will raise rates throughout the U.S. Money would be worth the same in the country as in the cities, and that causes a sticker shock, which scares many people, especially businesses. Obama and Hillary are fighting only for a 10-10 per hour, and leaving the rest up to cities for this reason. The best solution, however, would be to have what is referred to as a living wage, which is dynamic based on your area and cost of living. I'm not sure exactly how other groups wish to set it up, but a great idea would be to set up a wage at one level in one U.S. county and set the wage in every other county based on cost of living. $22.50 in the most expensive area of New York would trickle down to $11.50 in Indianapolis, which is hardly luxury, but it's also not poverty. If a factory moves to an area because the labor is cheap, they can actually raise the cost of living. If they leave, cost of living may drop. These wages may be also set to inflation, like they should have been, but the Democratic Party at the time didn't do so because they were more corrupt at the time and wanted Americans to keep voting for them for wage hikes. But that's an issue with two-party systems and is another video. Studies between two states and cities where one area raises minimum wage while the other doesn't has shown only a tiny, tiny net loss of jobs because people now have the money to go buy locally, which creates more jobs and businesses, and people don't have to work multiple jobs now to get by, which creates a job loss. Inflation and cost of living does now rise, but not enough to match the actual rise at all. And less people are on welfare, sending more tax money to projects that help everyone instead of the working poor. Raising the minimum wage is essential to raising us all up financially. A company will have to pay all of us more. If we can tell them, hey, I can go work at McDonald's and not starve, so pay me more. However, raising the minimum wage nationwide is not really the best solution unless it's a way to get people to stop moving to cities, as you can get really rich out in a small town for the same job that you could in a big city because cost of living is so low. Or it increases cost of living to match that of a big city. A living wage is much more dynamic for everyone, but spreading the idea is complicated, so for now I support the Fight for 15 because they really are the only political game in town. Sadly, it will continue to have too much resistance from areas with cheaper costs of living, which will prevent it from going beyond cities. Hey there, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw from my channel, please subscribe and donate to my Patreon. If you have evidence to counter what I say, please provide it. If you would like to see what I was doing with this channel six years ago, please click the links on the screen. Thank you so much.